What is something that you were warned about when you were younger that you now feel was exaggerated? Stranger danger is a real thing, but you're much more likely to be abused by someone you know, even someone your own age. I sometimes wonder if I was educated on this as a kid if I'd have told a teacher what a classmate was doing to me for years and gotten some help earlier in my life. Your permanent record. I'm 55, and nobody has ever asked me about the time I was sent to the principal's office when I was 16. I got a job and they didn't even bring up that I had my own assigned seat in detention. It's almost like I wasted all that cool kid cred, I'm so tempted to ask but I don't want to ruin your streak. Nice way to ask indirectly. I wonder if it's even possible for someone to find that record. Is it really permanent? Does a record of that principal's office visit still exist at all? Of course the real permanent record is the sh people are posting online. That sh might end up actually coming back to haunt you decades later. You're absolutely right. My job includes doing preliminary security checks on new employees before passing their information along to our government clients. No one can access anything before you were 18 years old. Not even for top secret clearance but having a Facebook friend with an Islamic name by itself can delay your clearance for a few weeks. It might even cost you your clearance depending upon who his friends are. Apart from infamous quicksand, I thought it would be a bigger problem being stuck in the Alps and having to drink alcohol from a St. Bernard's necklace. Also, cannibalism was a huge concern in late elementary to early middle school days. It was highly unlikely we'd ever crash in the Andes or that our wagon train would get stuck in the mountains in winter. But for some reason all the kids in my school were concerned about it. Should we eat someone? Could we actually do it if we had to? Who should we eat first? The fat kid will keep. But we don't want the muscular guy to lose too much weight. We were pretty effed up. I'm now realizing. Swallowing chewing gum. In still waiting for that watermelon to grow out of my stomach. When I was 5, I did that many times and ended up with terrible constipation. I had to have x-rays for the doctors to check out what was going on. Our neighbor was a nurse and helped my parents give me an enema. Mom warned me to avoid any girl who wanted to stick her tongue in my mouth. French kiss because it would lead me astray. Mama warned me about women like you. I was hoping she was right. Whoa mama. I was told I would get frog lips. Well I don't have frog lips. I mean... She's not entirely wrong. I've been lead astray many times. When my 5th grade teacher told us that 6th grade would be a lot harder. Haha. <laughs> so true. I heard this lie throughout my entire school life. Laugh now kids. Because once you're in. Current grade level 1. Your teachers won't put up with this kind of behavior. My 8th grade teacher kept telling us how scary high school was and how unprepared we all were. She told us that freshmen were to be hunted at the beginning of the school year. She told us that we'd probably get beaten up just because we were new. She told us that we'd have to run from class to class because we'd be a target. She told us we'd all be back visiting her and saying how sorry we were and how much we miss middle school. Her source was her daughter who was like 3 years older than us. Fast forward to my first day of high school I got assigned two seniors to show me around the school and be my buddy for the first couple of months. Literally one kid tried to mess with the freshman and like the whole school was like dude what are you doing? F you Linda. High school was alright and nobody got hunted. I had an identical thing with school in general. Whenever we're on the verge of graduation. Elementary school to secondary. Secondary school to college. They would always talk about how teachers at the next level would have a tough love. We don't care attitude. There were some elements of truth. But a lot of what they said turned out to be laughably wrong. I think it was just meant to scare the true slackers straight, yeah. I was lead to believe the professors in college would be complete a-holes, turns out, they were just regular a-holes like me and everyone else. Turning on the light in the car, turns out it's not illegal but is actually distracting for the driver. So dad could've just said the glare is distracting don't have it on for long. I make it a point to wreck my car if someone turns on the overhead light after I tell them not to. They have to learn somehow. My mom was obsessed with the idea that old bad sh only happened after midnight so that was my ironclad curfew. Guess what mom? A ton of bad sh has happened to me in broad daylight. If the movie Gremlins ever raised an existential question in my jellyfish brain, it has to be this one. When does after midnight stop? 11.37? 13.15? How do the gremlins know what time zone they're in? 
How about daylight savings time? When I started my job I didn't have a car. Got off work at 2 a.m. Went to the gym then took the first bus of the day home at 4.30 a.m. A couple of my older co-workers were very upset by this and went to the boss, without speaking to me first, and demanded my schedule be changed, because they were worried about me. The boss, without speaking to me, went to her boss and got my schedule change approved. I didn't want a schedule change. I have a sleep disorder and have to work at night, and I've been taking the city bus for about 15 years. The safest buses of the day were the first buses of the day. I was told I had to change my schedule and was not given a choice. They said I could switch to day shift, which begins at 5am. So apparently taking the bus home at 4am is dangerous but going to work on the bus at 4am is perfectly safe. Because the imaginary murderers and arpists hiding in the bushes waiting to attack me won't bother someone going to work. They only bother people going home. I think that's their logic. Forced to buy a car because of some nosy bee who never took a bus in her life and is afraid of the dark SMH. And BTW when a co-worker who lived 25 miles away had her car break down for an extended period of time. You know what I did? I went and picked her A up and took her home every night. I didn't go to the boss and demand her schedule be changed. I live less than 5 miles from work. Interesting how the people who were so concerned about me couldn't be bothered to give me a ride. Giving you an award cause I legitimately got so effing angry reading this. And I don't get angry. I just 100% understand the frustration. Go to your boss's boss and explain it if you want. F them to Tonkus. My school made me believe that I would be set on fire frequently. It has obviously not happened yet. My 50 year old dad actually got set on fire not too long ago and he said his first reaction was to stop drop and roll like he heard in grade school and that it worked. So it may not happen very often but someday you may be thankful. It doesn't help when you are covered in a flammable, self oxygenating liquid. Ask me how I know. My 4 year old niece lectured me the other day about not having a fire ladder in my second story and fire extinguishers strategically placed through my house. I mean, she's not wrong, but it still stung. We learned stop, drop and roll. I didn't pay much attention. Years later, in my 20s, I caught on fire, panicked and started running around, increasing the flames. Thankfully a friend of mine chased me down. Tackled me and rolled me around until the fire went out. If I caught on fire today I'd probably still do the wrong thing. Lol. Talking to strangers online. Hello internet friends. Talking to people online. And then meeting them. I would never have met my partner. Got my job. Had my hobby. Had any of my friends. Traveled anywhere I got an Uber to if I hadn't. You're not my friend I'm not getting in the van with you. That's my purse I don't know you. My parents both smoked before having kids, and my mom raised me on stories about how the first time she smoked a cigarette, she coughed so badly that she threw up, it made staying away from smoking cigarettes pretty easy, because I didn't want to puke. Once I was in college I brought up the story to her and she blinked like an owl caught in the sunlight. Wait, you believed me, she said. I was just trying to get you to not smoke, if smoking made me vomit. Why do you think I smoked for 15 years? Good job, mom. I could definitely see throwing up the first time you smoke a cigarette. Especially if it's a really strong one. Cigarettes taste horrible and the nicotine makes you feel lightheaded and nauseous if it's your first time. I didn't throw up but I coughed my guts out. Same thing with the first time I tried weed. Coughed for what felt like eternity. Getting written up at work. Turns out that permanent work record does not exist and will not follow you from job to job for the rest of your life, or your school permanent record like all the tropes in shows and movies. No one cares that you pushed little Billy down in 4th grade. I remember my teachers always scaring me saying if I misbehave it'll go on my permanent record. He as if some potential employer is going to be like you're highly qualified for this job but unfortunately we can't hire you since you pushed Billy back in 4th grade, unless it's a hipper thing and you're trying to get back into the medical field. Absolutely, but getting written up as a 16 year old at a retail job, nah. I really thought the Bermuda Triangle would play a stronger role in my adulthood. I still feel strangely drawn to it, haha. <laughs> Playing with yourself will make you go blind, sure. My eyesight has declined over the decades but it's absolutely been worth it. My mom said some of her friends growing up were told lies like that. 
One friend was apparently told if she touched herself she would go crazy. My mom told me that this girl did go crazy because she was obsessed with trying to not touch herself. Like after she peed she had to make sure her hands didn't touch anywhere. And this actually drove her crazy. Of course, I don't know if this is true or just a wild exaggeration from my mom. But she did seem sad when she told me that so I think it might have been mostly true. Does Reddit have a text to speech so I don't have to read this? If you are not a model student and don't have excellent grades, you will never amount to anything in life. I was a model student and had excellent grades. I haven't amounted to much due to crippling anxiety and depression. Yay. I once saw it said that gifted students either became doctors, lawyers, or adults with crippling anxiety. Teaching kids to base their self-worth on academic achievement is essentially a high risk, high reward maneuver. You might give them the mentality to reach the top of the non-business income earners, but more likely you'll scar them for life when they don't get there and have to live with not being okay with being mediocre. Apparently my face will not actually stay like that if I make funny faces in the mirror. When I was a small kid, my mum said that line to me. My smooth small kid brain asked her is that what happened to you? My line of thinking was how could she know that unless it had happened to her before, but I soon received a smack. You are my new hero hahaha. <laughs> it will however stay like that if you scowl on a daily basis. Courtesy of RBF. Random boner fever? Drug dealers. I thought people would force that drugs down my throat until I was a broke addict. I have been offered it a few times in high school but funny enough they were all very wholesome interactions. My favorite was a guy who I had never spoken to, who had just learned I was chronically ill and he said that if I ever wanted to try anything he would give it to me for free and would help me to do it safely since he knew I didn't do drugs. It was just a very pure moment and I will never forget that look of kindness and concern in his eyes. I've since been around many, many drug dealers, I think everyone in the Netherlands has, and have never been forced, tempted or manipulated to do drugs. Stop playing with the computer you'll get dumb. I'm a software engineer now and I make more than all my friends. Killer bees. I was told in DARE that people would constantly be offering me drugs and trying to get me high and it would be a constant struggle to turn them down. Imagine my disappointment. I was told the same thing, except about being recruited into a cult. Like, it wasn't if it was when. They just wanted to educate you enough to tell on your parents about their marijuana usage. This is what an eighth of Kush looks like and if you ever see any anywhere no matter who it is, immediately report it to the police. Remember when they had you sign a giant wallpaper saying you would never do drugs lol. What a laugh. A post-program study showed that kids who participated in the D.A.R.E. program ended up being more likely to use drugs than those who didn't. Which is hilarious. The D.A.R.E. program told us that 30% of 7th graders were smoking crack. So my 12 year old brain just wondered why I wasn't cool enough to be invited to these crack parties. Movers with age ratings. It was the creepy kids movers TV shoes that traumatized me. Not those movies. He. Stranger R.E. It still happens and is devastating. But most R.S. are committed by someone known to the victim. Not by a masked stranger popping out of the bushes. I think that emphasis on stranger fear discourages people from seeing red flags in situations with people they know. Wasn't it then found out that stranger danger did a lot of harm because when people were in actual danger they were less likely to seek out help from stranger because they were afraid of them, also because it focused so much on strangers that it kinda further reinforced that non-strangers are safe. Now your creepy uncle who you would be wary of is just a creepy uncle, not a stranger so he must be safe. My philosophy is generally that the average person you approach on the street will be reasonable, honest, and good intentioned. The average person who approaches you on the street is much more likely to be trying to hurt or scam you. Same for child abductions. The vast, vast majority of missing children are custodial interference or unaways. Only about 100 stereotypical stranger danger kidnappings happen every year in the US. How hard high school is. Teachers always said you would have to smarten up in high school and you would barely have time for anything. I crocheted my teacher a sweater for his dog in class once. I think he'll be okay. I barely did any homework in high school. Still graduated with a high 70s percent average, which AIUI is still pretty decent in Canada. So when they told me the same stuff about college, I didn't listen. Pro tip, at least for a STEM major. 
They mean it for college. The requirement of having your sh together. Virtually everyone is in various stages of chaos. Even if they give the appearance of having everything carefully planned. I was promised people would offer me drugs for free. Right. Me too at 42 I have thus far only been offered expensive drugs. Very disappointing. I don't even know how to find a drug dealer. They should teach these sorts of useful life lessons in school. Yeah, D-A-R-E. Had me worried I was going to be fending off drug dealers with a bat once I reached high school. I'm now inching towards 40 and have yet to be offered drugs ever. At any time. Eat a holy hell. My most upvoted comment is about being drug free. I guess D-A-R-E. Worked after all. Hey there. You want some drugs? This. And just pressure to do drugs in general. I was under the impression that some villains were going to actively try to force me to do drugs. And I know that is a legit concern when it comes to people slipping something in a drink. But this was an elementary school. Most of my life. People who offered me drugs were trying to be nice and if I said no they were happy to keep more drugs for themselves. If I didn't do everything that was expected of me, I'd end up flipping burgers. That turned out to be absolutely untrue. There's absolutely no shame in working in the food industry. Yeah, some of us did everything that was expected of us and still ended up flipping burgers. Not to shame it. Everyone deserves a living wage and regular hours. Turning on the car light. Law. If you turn the car light on while your dad is driving, he will swerve off the road immediately killing your entire family. Having a bad handwriting being a huge handicap for me in the future in my professional life. I've been working for 20 years, now. Never had to write anything down using a pen beyond personal notes here and there. Not meant to be shared. Can anyone read this guy's post? It just looks like scribbles to me. They should have warned him when he was younger. Quicksand. To my absolute surprise, I recently discovered that this is actually a problem for typical adults. Of course as long as you work in construction and use heavy equipment, diesel engines and compressors generate vibrations, so soil can liquefy, and sink and suck excavators and bulldozers, even tracked ones. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. Near me there is a big project of digging a canal trough sea spit and building waterway. It's 1.3 kilometers long and 120 meters wide. Obviously it's mostly sand. And from local crews I heard they had to call hardware rescue specialists four times in the span of two years. One was a write-off. It got below ground water level. Television was going to ruin my brain. Turns out that was the internet's job. Turns out the internet is your brain. As the hive mind proposed. The tables have turned because now I have to spend a portion of my time explaining to my parents that the stuff they read on Facebook isn't true. They like to argue about things that don't make sense so whose brain really got scrambled by technology? 90s parents then. Kids, don't think anything you read on the internet is true. 90s parents now. Kids, what I mean it's not true. I saw this on Facebook. Cracking knuckles causes arthritis. Lies. It's annoying to hear but it doesn't cause arthritis. If you respect others, they'll respect you respect your elders. Such bullsh. People of all ages can be terrible people regardless of how they are treated. How likely it was for a tornado to plow into my elementary school. Pretty sure sitting on my knees in the hallway with my hands over my neck would not save me from a ceiling caving in. DR. Donald Dunger actually cracked the knuckles of his left hand at least twice a day for over 50 years whilst never cracking those on his right hand in order to prove his mother wrong he never developed arthritis in either hand, and won an Ig Nobel award for his efforts in 2009, to prove his mother wrong, showed you mom. We don't use calculators in class and you should learn how to not use one. You'll never catch anyone working with numbers not use a calculator. The thing that always bothered me was you have to memorize all of these formulas. Accountants have reference books. Lawyers have reference books. Why does a student have to memorize something for a test on paper, when the paid professionals don't? For work, a friend of mine in high school was required by his father to memorize just about everything. In the real world, you won't have books or reference materials. You will be required to have it all memorized. Yes, I'm sure the lawyer down the street has every bit of case law from the last 150 years memorized and would never need to consult a book to find relevant rulings. Just wait till you go to primary school. You won't be playing games in primary school. You're gonna be working your way off. You. Okay. 
Just wait till you go to high school. You won't be playing games in high school. You're gonna be working your way off. You. Okay. Just wait till you go to university. You won't be playing games in university. You're gonna be working your way off. Okay I guess. Jokes on them. I literally now teach a university course on designing games for education. I play games all the time. My mom was petrified of Dungeons and Dragons when I was a kid because there were rumors that someone in our small town got too deeply into it and committed suicide because they lost their mind. My mom was not a religious nut at all but she said that people who called themselves Satanists or who were members of cults played it. This is mine too. The whole thing that Dungeons and Dragons is satanic and a number of kids were killed in satanic rituals revolving around it. And now it's been dressed up as a harmless game to draw in more victims. Turns out it's just a game. Razor Blades in Halloween Candy. Being kidnapped because I had a long ponytail. Being in a school shooting. Oddly enough, those things seem more likely to happen now than they did back in the 90s. Exaggerated for the time, but prepared me for the future. Yay. Apparently the razor blade poisoned candy was an urban myth and there are hardly any cases ever reported of it. Interesting read. Specifically candy. That and poison candy. We were told to examine every one hour pieces candy when we were kids. I like. There hasn't been a single reported incident of tampered Halloween candy. I think it's actually a bit worse than that. One of the few cases of tampered Halloween candy came from the parent of the kid tampering with the candy. So it's not even strangers you should be worried about. Peer pressure. Almost all the peer pressure I felt was actually self pressure. Was actually self pressure. But was it enormous? My school and parents. Your friends are going to pressure you to drink. My friends in high school. Mayo, we're not old enough to drink where do you even buy boots? My friends in college. You are a child baby you can't drink. My friends now that I'm old enough to drink. Okay I have Pedialyte and Gatorade for tomorrow morning. If you don't want to drink we have soda. Everyone pace yourselves and make sure you eat. If you get the drunks ads or the spins then here is my dog to comfort you. Sounds like some chill friends NGL. Waiting an hour after eating before swimming. Visiting my relative's lake house often as a youth. I'm pretty sure this was so the adults could take a siesta after eating instead of immediately keeping an eye on the kids. Don't ride your horse alone in the woods you will be attacked by a rapist. My mother, a city woman warned me about this and don't go out in a boat alone for the same. I might be attacked, boarded and red, like pirates looking for virgins on the high seas uh, river. Not going to college would make it impossible to have a fulfilling career. When I was younger, my mother once told me that if I didn't start paying attention in school I'd be lucky to end up as a roofer. Yada, yada, yada I got my sh together academically in high school. Went to a good college. Went to law school. Got a good lawyering job. The other day my mom reminds me of the time she said that if I didn't start paying attention I'd end up as a roofer. My response was, mom. One of my best friends is Roofer. He got his GED. Never attended college. And after a few years of hard manual labor he was managing his own crews and running his own shop. He could probably buy and sell me multiple times over and works half as many hours. Can confirm. Neighbor is a construction worker that never finished high school and barely speaks the local language. He owns three houses on our block and rents two of them out. He is constantly going on trips or just hanging around their backyard working on his tan. I went to university, spent 5 years and 50 dollars k to get a degree, then back again to a college for another year to get a certificate, then lastly a technical school for 2 more years to get a diploma, earn just shy of 100 dollars k a year now. My wife became an apprentice and went to a trade school, she no longer works on the tools, but has a cushy office job. Spent a total of 14 weeks in school. She earns just shy of $200k a year and has out earned me every year since high school. For example. When I was a child. I was told many times that badgers will bite your leg until they hear a crunch. So it's smart to put pine cones inside your boots. This made me think that aggressive badgers would be something I had to deal with a lot in my life. Surprisingly. It was not. Meeting strangers from the internet. It's actually quite fun.